Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jake and welcome to my review of Dishonored 2, developed by Arkane Studios and published by Bethesda. Today we're going to find out if it's improved upon the original game. So let's get this straight. Performance is really bad. I'll give it credit for the uncapped frame rate and the tons of graphic options available, but the frame rate is wholly inconsistent, literally going down by almost 45% when looking into wide open areas. Oftentimes you'll see a 980Ti dip to about the mid 60s to mid 70s on medium settings, and that's just inexcusable for a title that recommends a GTX 970. Making matters worse, the frame rate seems to be tied to the mouse sensitivity, meaning that the higher the frame rate at the moment, the lower the sensitivity of the cursor, making the game feel very sluggish. Additionally, sometimes the game doesn't register the F command, making it feel clunky at best and downright frustrating at worst. Finally, there are reports that there are crashes appearing randomly throughout the game. Bethesda has said that a patch is in the works, but we'll see if anything changes significantly when that comes. The story begins with Corvo and Emily celebrating the death anniversary of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. Sometime during the ceremony, a lady named Delilah marches in and introduces herself as Jessamine's half-sister and rightful heir to the Dunwall throne. As if on command, the military turns on itself in a coup d'etat fashion to place Delilah on the throne, thanks to the help of the Duke of Sirkonos, Luca Abel. The story then diverges here depending on whether you'd like to play through the game as Emily or Corvo, with the other being imprisoned in stone. You then escape Dunwall Towers to find Megan Foster, a mysterious ship captain who's looking to help you retake the throne, after you help her that is. The game then gives you missions to take down Delilah's pillars of support, in much the same way the original game did. Your main characters are Corvo and Emily, and whoever you choose remains your permanent character all the way through the game. Character progression for both of them is pretty decent and people interact with them differently in select few areas. Both Corvo and Emily, while initially motivated to save one another, in time gain perspective on their journey through Karnaka as they see the state that Luca Abel has left it in. Depending on your chaos level, which I'll talk about more in a bit, they'll either take a more responsible or cynical approach on life. Thankfully, both of them give exposition as you explore around the levels, which is a huge improvement over the silent protagonist of the first game. Add to that the written travelogues they write after each mission and you'll have decent characters with more than just the current objectives on their mind. Alongside the main plot of rescuing one another, further subplots of bloodfly infections and mysterious killers are also added into the mix to give you some variety in issues to handle and most of these plot points are easily understandable and never really overstate their welcome. It's a fine story that is more complex than you being the absolute good guy but if you didn't like the original's story progression, this one isn't going to change your mind either. Corvo and Emily's interactions differ enough for me to warrant a second playthrough coupled with their different skill sets, but more on that later. Dishonored 2 takes the quality over quantity approach with its two side characters, Megan Foster and Delilah Caldwin. Megan is a character with many levels and secrets that get revealed when she starts to see you as more than just a means to an end. Delilah is developed to a point where you can't help but feel a sense of empathy towards her and her situation. World building, done typically through reading letters and listening to conversations, is more compelling this time round, probably because it's a little bit more consistent throughout the missions. The heart that can listen to people's secrets is back too, and it seems to have a different secret for just about every citizen in Karnaka. The fact that side characters are more developed overall means that the exposition of the heart feels more like a welcome addition this time, rather than a preferred replacement for their explicit conversations. At its heart, Dishonored 2 is still a stealth action adventure game. It brings back its emphasis on choice in taking out enemies and getting around the map in general, with there always being more than one way to get to a certain location. It doesn't fall into the same trap of the original game's lack of variety in non-lethal weapons, because this time you have different types of non-lethal darts, and even stun mines that can take out groups of enemies when fully upgraded. Most importantly, aerial stuns and counter chokes are also now made available, making it actually feasible for you to confront all enemies head on. Lethal combat is just as viable as before and the game still has its chaos mechanic causing there to be more blood flies, more violent citizens and an overall darker outcome to the story if you get far too trigger happy. Again though, it's not as though these high chaos ratings will change the way you fundamentally handle levels. Missions will include you taking out key targets and you'll use your arsenal to do so through the straightforward lethal way or you can take the extra step and find a non-lethal route. Aside from your standard weapons, which you can upgrade at shops present during most missions, you also have a few magic spells, courtesy of your old friend the Outsider. Emily and Corvo both have almost completely different active magical skills, making their own playstyles rather different. 
Magical skills here can be used offensively or defensively again as per the original game and I'd say to pick Emily for your first playthrough if you've played Dishonored recently because Corvo skills aren't that much different from before. As usual, you'll upgrade these skills through the collection of runes and while you're at it, you'll also come across some bone charms that give you positive traits. Dishonored 2 adds some more depth with bone charms that can give you negative traits as well and even a crafting mechanic to maximize the efficiency of your slots at the risk of creating your own corrupted bone charms. To keep things from getting stale, you'll want to consistently get weapons and magic upgrades that cost money and runes respectively. Thankfully, the city of Karnaka is huge with plenty of rooms for you to explore to learn about the world and more importantly, loot to your heart's content. You'll be pretty much set if you explore each location that has a bone charm or rune to it since there's a fair bit of loot there as well. Exploration is very clearly rewarded with lore bits about the world and many other times you'll find a safe that has its combination hinted at in some note nearby. Since some missions don't tell you how to take down your targets non-lethally from the get-go, you'll have to snoop around to find some private files to give you a clue. All of this feels possible thanks to the game's superb level design, particularly with its verticality as well as in the multiple methods of obtaining the same piece of information. The amount of choice here never makes you feel punished for say prioritizing Blink over the possession skill. Enemy variety in the game has also improved, from the soldiers that wield swords to the giant mechanical robots that can see both front and back at the same time. The game makes better use of its supernatural setting as well, not shying away from magical enemies and their undead pets that make you feel as though each level has its own twist to its enemies. AI has been made smarter in their vision but not through their hearing. This means that even if an enemy spots you for a brief moment, it'll investigate that location but accidentally knocking a glass or even choking someone next to the AI will not alert them. Direct combat isn't significantly different from before. Guns have little to no recoil to manage and the crossbow only fires in an arc over long distances. Sword play is a little harder at the beginning with a shorter parry window this time but largely remains the same in that you spam right click when the enemy isn't striking you and you try to block at the right time when he is. There are however many more kill animations in Dishonored 2, making the motion of taking out multiple enemies in a row much more satisfying. A big problem I have with the combat is an exploit I've found. The game basically allows you to execute a slight takedown regardless of how close the enemy is towards you or whether they see you or not. This seems a bit too overpowered since you're almost never hit while executing this slight takedown, so maybe make it such that it won't work when the target sees you coming. I can see why you like her. She's, She's almost, almost as secretive as you. Make it faster. She wasn't always a ship captain. Who do we have here? What's the mask for? Walk on. You won't like how this ends. Oh, that's not how it ends? How does it end then? No! no! Dishonored 2 looks very much like a better version of the original game. Better textures, better blood effects, and better all-around detail in things like character models, at least when it's running smooth enough for you to notice. There are times when the game just looks absolutely beautiful and full of life thanks to the citizens of Karnaka. Each mission will take place over two to three different areas, with the first couple being the different districts of Karnaka. These areas are definitely different from one another, but they share the same Karnakian architecture, which you'll notice as you're moving from one balcony to the next. The climax of each mission though will bring you to entirely new areas in these districts like institutes, palaces, mansions, so on and so forth, which bring some much welcomed variety with their different multi-floored layouts and surroundings to match. Enemy designs also look decently varied with visual designs helping gameplay-wise as well, like having enemies with helmets impervious to one headshot before the helmet is shot off the enemy's head with an oh so satisfying clanking sound. Which brings us nicely to audio. As an audio package, background music in this game, which uses instruments like the violin, piano, harmonica, guitar, and cymbals to name a few, is actually pretty good, but it doesn't get used often enough to allow it to shine. The game is mostly silent musically to allow you to hear your surroundings as clearly as possible, which it succeeds pretty well thanks to the good directional audio with voices and footsteps. Voices are quite a mixed bag. While I do enjoy the expositions given by Corvo and Emily, I feel that their delivery doesn't do justice to flush out the complex layers of their character. Sound effects in this game, like I said, are pretty good. The sound of metal striking against metal has this really organic ring to it, and the audio feedback you get when you're cutting down enemies just emphasizes how much you are on a killing spree. All in all, an above average sound package. 
Ultimately, I'm giving Dishonored 2 a rating of wait for a sale or a patch. It's a good sequel that understands what made the original Dishonored so enjoyable and improved upon its core gameplay loop to make it equally as viable to go non-lethal. You interact with less people, sure, but the game more than makes up for it with these characters being far better developed. And all this high praise makes it that much more a shame that I can't recommend it as a full price purchase, mainly due to its performance issues. A AAA title shouldn't have been released in this state, and until a patch comes and fixes most of these issues, I won't be telling you to pay $60 upfront for this otherwise fantastic game. It's something that I consider at its current state at maybe 30% off. For alternate game recommendations, I would recommend Deus Ex Mankind Divided. For another game that does world building really well, emphasizing choice, but this time in a sci-fi setting. And that's gonna do it for me ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this review to be helpful in one way or another. Please do consider subscribing if you feel that my content is worth it, and please leave a comment down below if you think I missed out on anything. But for now, my name is Jake and I hope you don't think watching this video was a mistake.